In today's tutorial, let's get ready for summer with this crochet tunic that's coming up next. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on this beautiful crochet tunic. This has a bit of fancy uh, footwork on it but the rows are not uh, not doable. So there's actually only repeat of four different rows in order to achieve the look that this model is wearing. You will be glad to know that this panel idea is just a regular rectangle. So that's a wonderful thing. There's no shaping required. It will shape to your body figure and I love that about this. This is available in sizes small all the way to up to five extra large. You just have to follow the measurement instructions of what you have. The ball counts of what you need. Remember that this is Simply Soft light. So that's a three ounce ball. The typical ball for Simply Soft is about six or so ounces. So if you're looking at regular Simply Soft you don't need as many balls of yarn. So what we have today is that we're going to be starting on reading these instructions. I'm going to show you some tips right now because I was actually getting confused on how to start and I wanna get that off and out of the way right off the bat. In today's tutorial it's really heavily reliant that you check your gauge within a project like this because this is a wearable and you're gonna want it to fit you properly. There is gauge information in order for you to check in order to be accurate. I never checked her gauge and I really severely regretted it because she should have been uh, way too bi uh, small for this particular outfit and it turns out that she's a little too tight. So you wanna check your gauge about four inches into your project. Make sure that it's uh, getting to the width that it's recommended and it will tell you what that width is in the pattern and if it's not accurate at that point you can either then add another group a multiple of 10 or you can increase your hook size in order to make it bigger and if it's way too big then you can either decrease your hook size or take away a multiple of 10. Either way you'll have to determine that right off the bat because nothing is worse than getting something like this done and only to realize that it doesn't fit at the end. So let's uh, get started on today's tutorial. So in today's tutorial I was actually trying to figure out where am I starting on this particular project. Usually we start off here and then we go all the way down but I noticed that there was no chain counts but it tells you what the multiples are and the multiples are made up of 10 stitches and then at the very end there you have to add two extra. So I was thinking I was just gonna have to make that up to myself but I realized that the starting is actually right over here on the back on the back side. So and then the front is work the same as the back. So it says to chain 62. So you had a multiple of 10. So there's a multiples of 6 of there. 6 times 10 and then plus 2 which gives you your 62. So these here match the colors that you see over here. So you have to start off which one most accommodates to your particular figure. The nice thing about this uh, particular idea is that this here is the repeat pattern of the stitches. So we have to do the setup row first and get that all established and then we just have to repeat row one, two, three and four. four. And then so let's uh, take a look. I made a homemade diagram just to show you and I also have a sample because I'm also working on this and I've done the front side already and I'm about to start the back side here live on camera with you today. So just to reiterate the front panel and the back panel are exactly identical. We're just gonna sew them in strategic areas together in order to create the arm sleeves that you need and also to the neck. Okay, so we just have to be able to match them together and you're good to go and you go all the way down and etc. So they're very easy because it's just there's no shaping required. So what we're going to look at here is that the repeat pattern consists of all this. Do not get hung up on this. If you need to do a freeze frame of this right now you can do so and then do a screenshot to print or you can go on the crochetcrowd.com for this particular pattern. I'll provide a link in the more information of this video and I will scan this and you can have a copy of it. I have to say I really needed this in order for myself to follow. I was getting confused because the TV was too good for me to <laughs> keep my eyes completely on my project. So I had to just do this for myself and of course you can have this as well. Let me show you what a block looks like and, and I've done the front side and I've done mine in multiple colors. When we do this pattern we're going to be starting on the bottom where th of the model's outfit. So we're gonna start on the bottom and then work our way all the way to the top. So I change colors just strategically wherever I wanted to and I'm gonna make sure that whatever I do with the color changing I do it on the same level on the other side. So let's take a look at the stitch work that you see here. It's made up of like fans and single crochets and they completely line up to each other and there's a repeat rows of four that make it happen. So you kinda got like the fan shape going on and then you got one that loops into the top areas of the fan 
and then the next one is kind of like getting ready for the next fan and then you single crochet and then the next fan. So we're going to be breaking down the steps today from rows one through four but we have to set up our row first and you saw in my instructions is that if you looked at it really carefully I didn't point that out is that we have a setup row. So we have to set this project up in order for us to be able to do this properly. Okay, so we have to really be able to function to do this um, really quite effectively. So let's without further ado I'm going to grab my crochet hook and it is a size today I believe it is a four millimeter size G and I'm going to be using Karen Simply Soft Yarn in order to do this and I'm starting at the bottom so I'm gonna use the exact same color here. It's like a lilac kind of idea. Daniel picked the colors out of this so I'm trusting in him I'm telling you. So uh, let's come right back and let's begin to start to making one of these. So let's begin. I'm using a four millimeter size G crochet hook and Karen Simply Soft yarn. So remember that the chain counts depend on the size that you're making. I'm making a small size on here on camera. So it's chaining of 62. If you look at the instructions you will see that there's chaining of 72 for medium, chaining of 82 for large, 92 is for extra large, 2 to 3 extra large is 102 and for 4 and 5 extra large it's 112. So either way no matter what you do in this particular project you can still follow me along just change your ch uh, chain counts in order to be able to follow along. It just means that you're gonna have more of the shell work going across. So let's just chain. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. Please go to the size that you need to go in order to make your own. So let's begin the next part. So let's begin the setup row. So we've just done our chain going all the way across and now what we're going to do is that we're gonna make our way coming all the way. This uh, idea of the setup row is very similar to row number 4. Okay, so it's gonna go across. It looks very similar to it. The only difference is that we're gonna be skipping certain amount of stitches and it's easier to, to do number four than it is this one here. There's less counting really involved. So let's uh, begin. We're gonna chain up one and then we're going to um, single crochet. Sorry, we're not gonna chain up one. We're gonna go second chain from the hook. Then we're gonna chain three. We're gonna skip four chains and then double crochet into the next, chain three and double crochet back into the next and then skip another four chain three and then single crochet into the next. So you just have to continue to do that all the way across no matter what size that you're working on it'll work out as long as you kept your chain counts correct. Let me show you how to do that. So I have my chain and I'm gonna go second chain from the hook. So one and two get the back loop of the hook. So if you're like this just turn it and get the back loop of the stitch sorry and just single crochet there. And now let's begin to do the repeat pattern. So let's start off by chaining three. One, two, three. We're going to skip four chains. So just look at it and skip one, two, three, four. Go to the fifth and I want you to double crochet into the fifth. And okay. And then chain three, one, two, three and then double crochet back into that same stitch. Okay, that same chain down there. And now let's continue along. So chain three, one, two, three and skip another four. So one, two, three, four. Go to the fifth for a single crochet only. So that is one of the fans that you see. Let's continue the pattern across. So one, two, three, skip four. So one, two, three, four. Go to the fifth and you're gonna double crochet. So you, you've already seen me do this already. Then chain three, one, two, three, back into that one for another double crochet. Excuse me, I dropped my stitch. And then chain three, one, two, three, skip another four, one, two, three, four, go to the fifth for a single crochet. So now you've just completed two fans. See that? Let me show you one more time. So you're gonna chain three, one, two, three, skip four. One, two, three, four, go to the fifth, double crochet. Chain three, one, two, three, double crochet back into that same stitch. Okay, chain three, one, two, three, skip four. One, two, three, four, go to the fifth for a single crochet. Please do that all the way across your chain no matter what size chain you have. Okay, the, so the bigger the size the more of these that you'll have. So I'm coming up near to the end of the other side and you should look at it. Does it look 
even? Does it look proper? So this is a great way to tell right off the bat if you're not doing it right. So and what I mean by that is if a fan looks out of position or maybe you've skipped a, a single crochet along the way this is a good way to tell at this point just by holding it up. So I'm just here doing the double crochet chain three double crochet in the same and then I'm coming to the very end and you see that is the fifth chain. So one, two, three and then single crochet into the final chain just like that. Okay, so that concludes off that row and let's move along and now we're ready for the repeat pattern which is rows one through four. So coming back to my diagram rows one, one, two, three and four is all that it needs to do and then I have rows number one again just to show you that it is a repeat and also we have to end on instruction number one as well. So we have to finish with that. So this one here we're going to chain up one and we're going to do a single crochet into the same stitch. Okay actually a single crochet into the same stitch and then there's gonna be three single crochets into each one of the chain three spaces and one single crochet into each stitch. Okay, so here's a chain three. There's gonna be three single crochets in there. Here's another stitch. So there's one in there. Chain three again. Do you see that? So this one is a really easy uh, row across. So you just gotta look for the chain threes and making sure that you put single crochets into each one of the stitches that you run into. Let's begin with row number one. So row number one we're, we're gonna chain up one and right into the first single crochet that we're here and we're gonna put in a single crochet. So every time you run into these chain three spaces you are just gonna automatically put in three single crochets right around the chain itself. Okay, easy. Here's another, here's a, a, a stitch, a double crochet so you're gonna put in a single crochet in the top of the double crochet. Then another chain three so that is gonna be three single crochets. I like this round, it's easy. So here's another double crochet. So you're gonna go right into that double crochet and another chain three space. So continue to do that. There's gonna be three into that space and then you're gonna run into the single crochet. So just coming right into the single crochet just add a stitch there and then you're back on the other side of the chain three. So one, two, three. The next one is a double crochet stitch so do that one and then the next chain three space. Just use your fingers to open it up if you don't see it opening on you. The next one is a double crochet. Chain three spaces next so there's gonna be three single crochets there. I really do like this round. It's actually really quite a row. It's quite fast and then the next one single crochet. So you go in there. So what, what you're doing is you're thickening up that row by adding the single crochets just like you see there. So please continue to do that all the way across for row number one. So I'm coming up near to the end of row number one. I should warn you that in this row when it comes to repeating it further on in this project this outside chain doesn't always become obvious. You gotta look for it. You gotta make sure you pull your project out and that you see it. Okay so make sure you do that because once you start adding more and more to this it weighs down and it looks like this and you think you're done right here but you have to pull it out. So make sure you do your um, so three single crochets here into this space. Three single or sorry one single crochet into the final double crochet and then the final here has three. So one, two and three and then you have to make sure you don't miss that last one. It's a single crochet right in the very end. Okay, so it's not always obvious uh, when it's uh, when you're working on it on um, where, where that is. So you just gotta make sure you pull it out and make sure that you can physically see it just like that. Let's move along to row number two. So I'm back on my chart and I have row number two. I like row number two. It's actually really fast and it's easy. So what we have here is that we're going to start off here. So we've come all the way across and we're gonna chain up three and then we're going to jump over here. So in the middle these were the three single crochets that were in the middle. Okay, just like you see this one here is right up over top of this double crochet and so is this one. These five are what you're going to be doing with this fan work. So you're gonna double crochet into the first one, chain one, double crochet into the next one, chain one, double crochet into the next one, chain one, double crochet into the next one, chain one and double crochet into the final but do not change one. This here is a double crochet and we're gonna extend down to cover up over top of this other line that you'll see and we'll, I'll show you how to do that and then we do it all over again all the way down the line. 
So this one here, once you can either count the stitches to get the first one or I'm gonna show you visually where it is so that you can see it. Let's begin row number two. So it's always gonna start off the same way. We're gonna chain up three. One, two, three. This counts as a double crochet just so that you're aware of that. So we're gonna start off our very first one. You can either count the stitches over in order to find where the first one's gonna go or you can look right there. <laughs> Do you see this double crochet? Just follow it straight up and that's that first one. So one, two, three, four, five takes you to the other side of that one. So just look at this here and follow it straight up and it's right there. So you're gonna double crochet into that first one. Then you're gonna chain one. Double crochet into the next one and then chain one. Double crochet into the next one and you want a total of five of these. And then chain one. Double crochet into the next one. Okay, so you now have four out of the five that you can see. Chain one and double crochet into the last one. See so you see it's right up over top of that other double crochet that you started with but do not change our chain one at this point. Okay, so you're only chaining one in between the fan area. So we never chain one to start. So it's just chain one in between, 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 between. So now we're going to do a double crochet right into this stitch down here. Okay, how are you gonna get there? So you're gonna wrap that hook and just go right in. Let this yarn go right up over top of that line and just pull it through and double crochet. It's wrapping right up over top of that whole chain. Now we're gonna begin another fan. So again, we just look to where these are, okay, and follow this one straight up. Just straight up, okay, and that's your first double crochet. You can either count it over if you wish. So I just find it's just easier to visualize it and see if it's gonna work. So chain one and to this day I did the whole other panel without actually messing that up so it's pretty good. So you're chaining one in between each one of the double crochets as you work across. Okay and you're looking for a total of five of these chains. So we're gonna get into the last one here. This is your number five but you do not chain one. Okay. So then you're gonna come here to the middle section where the single crochet is. Wrap the hook, go right into underneath, around and pull through and pull through two. So okay, so you're gonna look for where the next bridge is. It's almost like a bridge and you are going to double crochet. Let me just quickly show you that again. So we're just gonna just look at where those are coming up and look straight up. Okay, it's that first one. If you do the fans and this fan is not directly in the middle, if it's over by one closer or it's over one later, you know that you've got the wrong stitch. Okay, so you're just uh, double crocheting, chaining one, double crocheting, chaining one. So this is row number two. Now when I changed colors in my particular project, I ended and change the color after this row. So I let the fan actually be the whole idea before changing the color in the next one. So that's where I change colors but it, this is your creativity. You can change it wherever you feel like it. So com please complete that idea going all the way for row number two. So I'm coming up onto my last fan that I'm working on and I wanna show you how to finish off row number two. Just drop my stitch there by accident. Chain one and I'm doing the last fan work they don't refer to that as the fan. I just call it because it looks like a fan. So now that I get the last one done, all I'm just gonna do is then just double crochet into the final stitch. Okay, so I don't go down underneath. I just go to the final stitch. So when we did this one here, row number two, when we started, I had you do a chain, sorry. I had you, you I had you do this as chain three and then we double crochet into the first. So technically why you would miss this other one like I explained is that it's actually gonna pull over and this is supposed to be a double crochet that's standing straight up. This side it becomes very obvious because of the way that we finish. This side is not so much and so therefore you can go wrong on that. So kindly watch for that. Let's move up to row number three. Row number three is right here. So we're gonna start up and we're gonna chain six. Three of them count as a double crochet and then three of them count as a chain three space. So if you look at the other side, see this is the double crochet coming in and the chain three space. So that's what it's equal to. So the fans have five. We're gonna come into the second one and single crochet into the second space, chain three and then on the other side, we're gonna single crochet in the other side. So this is the middle one of the fan. So we're gonna single crochet, chain three and single crochet on the other side. 
we're then gonna chain three and then double crochet into the middle double crochet that's sitting here and then we're chaining three and again to the second one over chain three and then come into the third space over just like so and keep keep doing that all the way for row number three. So let's begin row number three. It starts off with chaining a six, one, two, three. That's your double crochet right there. One, two, three again is your chain three space. So it's gonna lean over like this. Okay? So let's begin and we're gonna just look at our fan and we have one, two, three, four spaces. We are gonna come into the second space. Okay? So you can see four spaces. So then we're gonna single crochet there. Chain three, one, two, three jump over to the next space on the other side and single crochet just like so. And so these two will be completely in the middle. So this is the middle one of the fan. Do we agree? We should, yes. So let's chain up three. So one, two, three. We come into where the double crochet is where the fans are meeting right here and we're gonna double crochet into that same spot. And then chain three again. One, two, three. Look at the next group of fans come to the second space or look to the middle one and come into the first space before it. Chain three, one, two, three and then jump over that middle post and go to the other side of the space for a single crochet. Chain three and then come into the to the single or uh, double crochet that's right in between the fans. So this is a very quick uh, row, uh, row this one is. One, two, three we're chaining. Next group of fan and next fan Come to the second one over. One, two, three, jump over that middle post and go to the other side for single crochet and then one, two, three and double crochet into the double crochet that's between the fans. Please do that all the way for row number three. So when you get all the way to the other side, so this is what we're gonna do. So I've done my fan work here. So there's single crochet, chain three and then I come into the other side. You were going to chain three, one, two, three and then simply double crochet into the last stitch right here. It's a single crochet right down here. So remember when I started this round, our row, we had a total of chaining of six. So three of it was the double crochet and three of it was the chain three space. So let's begin to go up for row number four. Let's turn our work. So in row number four, we're going to then establish of working in between this chain three space right in the center. So this is the center post. This is the single crochet we did on one side of it. Then we chain three and then came on the other side. So it's this space that these double crochets are gonna play into. These are creating what we did in the setup row of these kind of like a V shape happening. And so it becomes, this is obviously a very easy row as well. So actually most of this is easy other than the, I guess the single crochets are probably slow you down the most. Um, but there's a lot of gapping spaces and so we're gonna be playing here and then we're gonna single crochet into the double crochet that's in between the fans and carry on. So it's all about chain three spaces I guess at this point. Let's move along to row number four. So in row number four, you're going to chain up one and then single crochet into the same stitch. Okay, so then chain up three, one, two, three. So look to where this chain three is in the middle of the fan. Okay, do you see it? So this was the middle post. We singled on one side, we singled on the other. The chain three is right in the middle. You're gonna double crochet right into that chain three space and then chain three, one, two, three and double crochet back into that chain three space. So I was kind of commenting when we did the chain that this row is easier than this and it is but you don't have to count all these stitches. You can just look for the visible indications of where to go next. You're now gonna chain three, one, two, three and then all you just need to do is single crochet into the double crochet that's in between the fan work. Just right there. And then chain three, one, two, three Look to where the fan is. Look at the chain three that's in the middle of the fan. You're gonna double crochet into there. Chain three and double crochet once again. Just like that. Chain three, one, two, three. Single crochet into the next double crochet that's in between the two fans. Do you see that? So can I carry on. So one, two, three. Okay, look for the chain three space that's right directly in the top of the fan and you're gonna double crochet, chain three and then double crochet back into that same stitch. Chain three, one, two, three 
and then single crochet in the top of the next double crochet that's in between the fans. Please do that all the way across. So I'm coming up to the last section here. I'm in the middle of the last fan. So I'm doing a double crochet, chain three and double crochet into that same one. Now how to finish this is that we're gonna chain three, one, two, three and then come back. So this was a chain six remember. So three of it was the double crochet and three of it is the gap. You just gotta visualize it okay because it's not obvious. So you're just gonna come to the top of the third one and then place your a single crochet. So now it forces it to look like the other side. So the other side the way we finished it looked like this but now it finally looks like this on this side. So let's uh, begin and we're gonna go for row number one again. In row number one we are going to then create all those single crochets like we did way back when. So this becomes the start of the repeat pattern for this entire project going all the way back to the top and you wanna finish on this next row when you get all the way to the top of your measurements. So let's turn our work and do a repeat row of number one. So it's just all these single crochets. Remember what we did there? So I'm just gonna take just to get you started here. So it's just chain up one and single crochet into the same one because I've already shown you how to do this. And then this is a chain three space. So you're just gonna place three single crochets into that same space. Okay, the double crochet is there. So you're gonna place one into the double crochet and then the next chain three space. So this is going to be a repeat pattern of rows number one through four. You are going to end up on finishing this row. Okay, finish on this round of doing all these single crochets and into the stitch work and the reason for it is that when we go to sew this together at the top um, you'll have some stitches to work with because this is really the only solid row there is in order to kind of sew things together so you don't have any unsightly gaps on the top of the shoulders. So I'm gonna leave that with you for now and I want you to get your blocks done. So you're gonna get the front and the back. They're both identical. Um, just make sure that they're both equal in size and then when we come back I'm going to continue along with doing the assembly and showing you how to do that next. So I'll see you in just a moment but I'll be back. in actual fact though I was just gonna be back in a day or so after I get that done. I'll see you. Bye bye. At this point of the tutorial we're ready to put our blocks together. We have two identical blocks here and they are, there's no difference from the front or the back. They're both equally the same. So what we need to do now is we have to strategically position this so and so in certain areas in order to create the tunic look. So we have to then be conscious of what yarn colors we've used. Now we've used a multiple of different colors so I'm gonna give you advice on that but you do not need a mannequin in order to do this. I did this for tutorial reasons but I'm gonna take it off the mannequin, lay it down on the table and then I'm gonna show you what I need to do to measure and all of those measurements are available in the pattern to match whatever sizes that you're working on because there's a multiple of sizes and he, of course each one of our armholes are gonna be different and same with your neck and etc. So let's uh, begin the next part of this tutorial on doing the assembly. So I'm now ready to put things together. I have two identical panels. This did not take very long at all and what we're going to do is that we're going to sew this in strategic areas to create the tunic. So we're going to be creating the inside seam on this as we go. So our first step is, it, is then to sandwich these together and then take the measurements as per the pattern and grab our measurements and take a look. But I'm gonna show you ways that I would do it in order to assemble because I think it'll be a lot easier. Okay so now I'm gonna just place one over top of the other and I'm looking to wearing uh, where I want it. So the one side of the top here this is the right side that's facing down so I want to face that up because I'm gonna be looking at the inside of this one and this one here I want to, I could have just done opposite when I think about it, I want the, the, the bad side facing down. So there we go. Okay, so the good side that we're gonna be looking at when you wear it is here and the, this the good side over here is on the underside. So we're gonna turn this thing around once we get this done. So now, we're so now I'm gonna measure up for the holes for the arms. So we wanna measure from the bottom to the top. So it says in the back section of the pattern here. So for my particular size it was 18 inches but then you can see that there's other dimensions there for the other sizes. So there was uh, 18, 19, 18, 19, 18 and 19. <laughs> So what I want to do is that I want to take my tape measure and I want to measure up and again there's no, I'm not forcing it open but what I want to do is measure 18 inches from the bottom 
and I wanna mark it with a stitch marker. So a stitch marker for me is just a spare piece of yarn and what I'm just gonna do is that I'm gonna cut a piece of yarn and I wanna grab a crochet hook in my pocket of course. And so I wanna take this yarn and right where it's 18 inches I wanna put it through the one side of the panel only and then I'm going to drag it through matching exactly where that is on the other side of the panel. So I just look down, just look straight down and capture that same stitch right on the underside and pull that same marker through. Okay, so it's gonna be both through both panels. And what I'm going to do is this, I'm gonna tie a bow tie to tie these together and this will indicate to me that the armholes are from the top to this section right here. So I can physically sew myself from all the way down right to the base. Now when there's different colors like this, so for example I got my brown here, I wanna use brown yarn for here, I wanna use my cream for here and I wanna use my orchid for here and that therefore you will never see any seam lines. So let's go back to the top then to create the opening for the neck. So now let's do the opening for the, the neck and in the neck opening it said for the finishing that you need to leave nine inches opening for the neck here and there was different sizes so there's nine, nine, ten, eleven and eleven and you have to look at the size and the pattern in order to do it. So I can look at it here and I can measure across okay and I have about 15 inches across unstretched and so I need to leave nine st uh, stitches or nine inches for myself. So what I want to do is that I'm going to start off here and I'm going to re uh, take out six inches so then therefore I have it on both sides. So again with my stitch marker idea is that I wanna mark both sides and I'm only gonna do one in the very beginning. So there's three inches here. So what I want to do is I wanna mark the really one in the beginning here and I wanna look to the other panel on the underside and get that exact same stitch on the other side. So I see it's just right over top of the V. I'm gonna match it exactly to the same stitch. Right there. Okay, so I'm gonna do one side first. Once it's through, I want to create a bow tie and that'll keep that together for me. And now I wanna go to the other side. So I know that this pattern is like a, a mirror of each other so I'm looking exactly where this pattern. So I can either measure but I, I'm just one of those kind of people where I'm gonna look at the same stitch on the other side and match it exactly. Okay, so just completely just kind of go over, get the one, and two. So then these two are now together. So I can use my green yarn now to go from this top where the stitch marker is to the end of the shoulder and that'll be good. So we're gonna come back to the other side of this, okay, where we need to, the measuring holes. So I have my stitch marker over here. So now I'm gonna make the stitch marker on the other side. So all I'm just gonna do is look to where I put the stitch marker in on the other side and match it exactly to this side. So it was right over the fan area. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do before I continue is that I left in all my stragglers, so all my loose ends, right in as I went. And so what I'm going to do for myself is that I'm going to get rid of those before I start sewing anything together. So I'm just gonna take in my loose ends and using a darning needle that's nice and sharp, if you go in and out of the project three times, you'll end up hiding in this uh, permanently into position and it should never slip out on you if you go in and out of your work three times. I have been demonstrating this for I think a couple years on YouTube if you have any concerns just look at any of my past tutorials in and out three times and you'll have the most perfect finishing um, ever because a project can never stretch three different directions at one time. So there we go. So that's one in and I wanna continue to move around to get all of the loose ends as they go. So 
So now I'm ready to do the actual stitching of putting the panels, sewing it together. So all the loose ends are in. This is the shaping that it's gonna have. And now I'm gonna start on the shoulders and work my way from the uh, end to the center. Okay, and then I'm gonna do both sides of that and I'm gonna do a whip stitch. Now this is the same stitch I'm gonna do all the way down, well not with the armholes, but right where I put the stitch marker in from all the way down. But you gotta remember, you gotta change your colors when you're hitting a different color. So I can only do a little bit of brown and then I'm gonna finish and then cream and then do the orchid and I have to do that the same on both sides. So let me uh, review on how to do whip stitching next. So I'm gonna do the whip stitching next of uh, putting it together. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit of the green that I want. I don't need a long length of it and I'm gonna create a slip knot on the one side of the string and I'm just gonna leave that to the side and I'm gonna put the other side through my darning needle. So I'm going to start off on the edge of the shoulder and what I want to do is grab one panel and I wanna grab the other one and sandwich it together and put both the, uh, sorry, the needle through both of the stitches that are on the end. And because the stitches are matching each other, I just have to go into the stitches. So I'm gonna pull in and I want to put this um, loop, the slip knot, into onto the yarn there and that will permanently tie that into position. And what I want you to do is this straggler here, I want you to lay it down over top and I want you to go in to the next stitch with both sides and lay this on over top and that'll, that'll trap that straggler from ever going anywhere. And you are going to just match each one of the stitches going across to the neck area. So just advancing one stitch at a time. And remember that the side that you're currently looking at is the inside of your project. So that's why I had you sandwich it in a way that the good side is gonna be facing out. Whatever good side you determined that was to be. So these ones are not so bad. So I just want you to continue just to drag that straggler along with you and keeping it on this side of the project, so on the inside. This is referred to as a whip stitch. Uh, I'm sure there's a reason why it's called a whip stitch. I don't know what that is and I don't wanna make it up. <laughs> so I'm just going up around and all the stitches across. And notice that I'm not reefing on it too hard. So I'm just having it sit there. So if you start seeing the project condense, like it's starting to bunch up, you know that you're too tight. So you just wanna take your time with it and match. So I'm now into the stitch marker here where I labeled it and I'm gonna put an extra one right there. That is the neckline. So I'm gonna put an extra one into the same one. So I've kind of wrapped around it twice. And what I want to do is that I wanna just glide the hook underneath the stitches Okay, just staying on this side of the project, gliding across how many times? If you said three, that's right. So I'm gonna pull out the stitch marker to get it out of my way. Okay, so if you glide it back and forth three times into the project, you'll never have it fall out. If you would like to tie a knot, just be very careful, just make sure if the knot, if you're gonna do a knot, just stay on, the, on this side of the project. So now that I've gone in, I'm just gonna kinda stretch things back out and now I have a seam line that's perfect within this area. The nice thing about this is that I don't, the green is not attached in any, any of the armhole area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on the other side and put the other one together. So we need another piece of string. So the upper piece is done just like this. Okay, so you can see it here and the stitch work should be perfect on the other side which it is because we've done whip stitching. So let's uh, begin to do one of the sides and then you're gonna do all of it together. So the brown is next up. I can start with brown. I don't need a lot of brown here because the reality is, is that the armhole was pretty close to it but it's not close enough in order to just ignore it. So right where the stitch markers are aligned, that's exactly where I'm gonna start. And I'm just gonna do the same thing of just going into both sides of the stitch work. I wanna go into chains and not gap spaces. If you go into gap spaces, you'll end up with uh, really big holes in the side of your tunic. So if you go into the chain spaces, it's a lot better. Once I got this one in, I'm gonna just take out the stitch marker so it's out of my way. 
and now the same rule, keep that straggler down on top of the line and just continue to progress down toward the bottom and stop if you've done multiple colors like this, stop when you have run out of that same color and don't you dare go down this thing with all of one color if you've got multiple colors because you will, you will see it. <laughs> you will see it. So let's continue to go. This is the last stitch then for brown for me for this side and again the same rule of exists of back and forth three times. And once you got that done, you're good to go. So you continue to move to the next color. So that's exactly how you would do that going all the way down. So I'm gonna leave the rest of this for you to put together and just continue to match your stitches as you go down. So my next color to use is white. So we're now ready for the very final part and it's not quite ready to wear. People tend to wear it right now but in the yarn factories when they prepare yarn to make yarn balls they actually steam the yarn to make the yarn explode and relax. So right now we've just created this whole tunic but the reality is that the yarn was never made to be into this tunic so therefore the stitch work and stuff does not look its best. So what, you rec what they recommend in the pattern is to block this using uh, steam or dampen it slightly. So I have my steamer. This is a Conair. People always ask me what it is. It's a Conair steamer. I bought it at Walmart for not very much money. And what I'm just going to do is that I'm going to steam the project. I'm telling you the difference between steaming um, a project versus not is really quite stellar. So I'm just steaming it now and you will see the stitches kind of just level off and if there's any wrinkle to the yarn itself it will totally get rid of it. So I just kind of work my way down kind of pulling on it a little bit making it nice and damp. I actually use this to iron my clothes too. See that? See the difference? So what I want to do is that I want to steam this whole thing and then I'm just going to let it just air dry. And it's not really wet at all anyway, it's just more damp. Okay, so this concludes today's tutorial on how to make a tunic. And I think that it's actually a lot of fun and um, this does not take a long at all. If anything, it's more the, um, a little bit of time for prepping to put things together. But then, you know, Rome was never built in a day. So this is a great opportunity to have something really quite cool. So until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great day and thanks for watching today. We'll see you again. Bye-bye.